Today in lesson four, I'll have a quote from C.P. Steinmetz from his book from 1911. And he has something really interesting to say. Watch it. Okay, here we go. I've got the book and I'm on page 13. There Steinmetz writes, Unfortunately, to a large extent in dealing with the dielectric fields, the prehistoric conception of the electrostatic charge on the conductor still exists. I remind you, this is 1911. We're now 2018. That's 107 years later. And we still don't get it. I'll continue the quote. And by its use destroys the analogy between the two components of the electric field, the magnetic and the dielectric, and makes the consideration of dielectric fields unnecessarily complicated. There obviously is no more sense in thinking of the capacity current as a current with which charges the conductor with a quantity of electricity and mind you he says charging and quantity and think about these two terms then there is of speaking of the inductance voltage as charging the conductor with a quantity of magnetism and again he has this these two words the charging and the quantity what this implies is he doesn't believe in a, um, uh, as Ken Wheeler says, the, the, you can't count the magnetic field and you can't count the dielectric field. There is no quantity of it. It's not something you can pick up and put in a bucket and have a bucket of magnetism. But while the latter conception together with the notion of a quantity of magnetism etc has vanished since Faraday's representation of the magnetic field by the lines of magnetic force, the terminology of electrostatics of many textbooks still speaks of electric charges on the conductor and the energy stored by them without considering that the dielectric energy is not on the surface of the conductor, but in the space outside of the conductor, just as the magnetic energy. So, he doesn't speak the, the famous word of that famous particle we invented. And I won't use the word either, because why should I? All the lines of magnetic force are closed upon themselves. All the lines of the dielectric force terminate at conductors, as seen in figure 8. And the magnetic field and the dielectric field thus can be considered as a magnetic circuit and a dielectric circuit. So a dielectric field is always terminated on a conductor and a magnetic field is always closed upon themselves. These lines of force from Faraday. And that makes me think what happens when we open up a circuit? And what happens when we close a circuit? And I mean what happens to a magnetic circuit when we open this circuit, when we've got a coil with electric energy stored in its magnetic field and these magnetic field lines of force are closed looped on themselves. And we open the circuit. I can imagine that these closed loops are opened which makes them basically dielectric lines of force.
but they're not terminated on a conductor. So they reconnect to the conductor as fast as possible. I don't know. I'm just speculating. And then there are li dielectric lines of force again. So they're turned into a voltage. The magnetic closed loop lines of force are opened up and reconnected to the conductor and this means there is a voltage. Is this why there is a spark of light when we open a switch that has a current running through it? Is this light when these dielectric lines of force are not connected to conductor? When we open the magnetic circuit? I'm just speculating, but I think this logic is very interesting. I think that's enough for today. Um, this quote clearly states several things. He talks about the insanity of uh, charged particles and he talks about uh, the, the insanity of talking about a quantity of magnetism or a quantity of dielectricity. But I'll leave it up to you. Make up your own mind. I want to give you a small preview. Uh, this here are uh, three stacked bifiler phi ratio coils. So they've got a phi ratio hole. I've got another video about that. Look it up if you want. These three coils will be used with this circuit. I'm really proud of it. Uh, my first version worked, uh, but uh, it had some uh, misconceptions and I corrected these. I am correcting these now. And um, basically I can tell you what this does is create resonance in the center coil by pulsing a outside coil, one of them, and uh, by pulsing it, it also creates a back EMF. And I capture this back EMF into a capacitor. And with this capacitor, I discharge it into the resonant coil. And therefore I create resonance from the capacitor discharge. And this way I'm able to combine two kinds of inducing resonance. And it's all based on the same energy. So it's a recycling, uh, reusing of electric energy from the magnetic and dielectric field combined into a resonant coil. You can see this uh, black on the outside that's from the uh, ferrite uh, that I uh, attach to the outside of the coil to increase the inductance and to bring the whole system into balance. So I'll be working on this and if I've got interesting results I will definitely share them with you. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel.